All right, hey, welcome to Gun Talk Hunt. I am Tom Gresham, your guest host today. A lot of fun out here. We're going to be having some fun talking about an important group. But first of all, we'd like to thank all of you for supporting Gun Talk Hunt in its first year. We'd also like to thank all the sponsors who made it possible, ATN, Loophole, Springfield Armory, and Timney Triggers. All right, we're joined right now by Gray Thornton. He is the, uh, the head poobah, the CEO, president, and everything else. Uh, you probably do the windows, too, don't you, Gray, at the uh, Wild Sheep you, Foundation? You know, uh, Tom, amazingly, my specialty is toilets. I'm a <laughs> one hell of a toilet cleaner. I get my big red gloves on, and and uh, we, we do it all here. <laughs> now, this, this, is the, 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 this is the Wild Sheep Foundation, formerly known as FANAS, uh, Foundation for North American Wild Sheep, right? Yes, correct. Right. And you were in Bozeman, Montana. Yes, we've got, uh, Tom, we've got headquarters in Bozeman. We've also got uh, offices in Cody, Wyoming, which was our home for about 30 years. Right, I know it well. And then I've got some remote uh, remote folks. We've got three conservation directors, uh, one in Idaho, one in Texas, and one who uh, alternates between Germany and running our international programs in Montana. So, wow. Not to mention an educator in Reno and a lobbyist in Washington D.C. So we've got uh, we've got our uh, footprints all across uh, North America and a wee bit of Europe. Holy cow! Yeah, I've, I've been to the facility there in Cody, just uh, down the street. I actually right next to the uh, Buffalo Bill Museum. So yes, very familiar yeah. with that. So if you would, let's start off with explaining kind of the history of the Wild Sheep Foundation. How it came about, and maybe more importantly, that's going to be our storyline, is why it came about. Uh, Great, uh, great question. Uh, Thank you, Tom. You know, uh, bottom line is wild sheep, unlike elk, white-tailed deer, mule deer to a certain degree, uh, wild turkey, uh, other game animals, just didn't pay their way. Um, Wild sheep got decimated. you know, kind of in the in the in the late 1950s, 1960s, um, primarily due to disease contracted by domestic sheep and goats, oh, but wow. also also over harvest. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and, and you know, we we as uh, North Americans have a you know a history of of use, sometimes overuse, and then as the hunter conservationists that we are, uh, you know, fantastic rebounds due right. to the you know kind of the the wildlife industry that we've created and foster. And, and, uh, but and bottom me, line, sheep, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, and, and, you know, let me just put a timeline on this. We're talking about the turn of the century into the 1900s, and then up to about, oh, call it 1960 ballpark. Numbers were really going down, and just as hunters did with a lot of other things, deer, uh, elk, and also waterfowl, I might add, uh, the hunters you looked did. at it and went, hey, you know, there's a problem here, and we're kind of probably the only vested interest and people say, Oh, you just, you, you want to save those so you can hunt them. Well, possibly partly, but also we are the, really the only vested interest that's going to get involved in this and actually do this. And I do want to point out for people who are wondering, what are we talking about? We're talking about North American wild sheep. Originally, uh, that would be stone sheep, doll sheep, uh, Rocky mountain bighorn and desert bighorn, right? Correct. Okay, so all right, I, I brought you up to we. You know, there was a problem. Hunters looked at it and said, "What are we going to do about it?" You bet. So you know the the problem was, um, you know, from a from a population when Lewis and Clark were making their way west of you know a million, maybe two million bighorn sheep in North America to a low in the late 1960s of 25,000. Wow. And as I mentioned, they they didn't pay their way. The challenge was there wasn't enough of them. Uh, even to you know get a uh, an interest by the agencies you know there mm-hmm. was there was a smattering of people that you know had certainly you know the jack o'connors and uh, and the grits you know that were interested mm-hmm. in sheep however um uh, you know the agencies weren't quite uh, long and short uh, advocates and, and it's so typical as you pointed out tom of uh, uh, those of us uh, that are supportive of elk, of mule deer, of, of, of uh, whitetail, of wild mm-hmm. turkey, of waterfowl, you know, we built organizations, we built a model, the North American model, uh, model of wildlife conservation to rebuild them. Right. In the particular case of wild sheep, 
that was a a group of people. Um, FANAS, the Foundation for North American Wild Sheep, was one of them. Mm-hmm. Um, the Fraternity of the Desert Bighorn, one of the oldest mm. advocacy groups for uh, for out of Las Vegas for for desert bighorn sheep, right. band together like we do for other critters and started raising money and pumping it into the agencies. And the key with wild sheep was to take sheep from areas where they uh, had decent populations and transplant them into areas that they were extirpated. Okay. Uh, there's been about 1,200 or so translocations since uh, the 1940s, about 24,000 bighorn sheep moved. Mm. Uh, and we started to repatriate uh, areas that, that could hold um, bighorn sheep and, and start building up the population from those 25,000 low of the 1960s, 1970s, we now have about 85,000 uh, bighorn sheep. That's Rocky Mountain bighorn, California, and desert bighorn sheep right. in North America. So a threefold increase, uh, pretty pretty substantial, but but we certainly have a long way to go. And that's and that's where the Wild Sheep Foundation and our partners and our chapters and affiliates come in. You know, and transplanting is part of it. Uh, the habitat is a, a big part of it. I mean, I don't know whether it's guz- building guzzlers or, or doing the, the kind of work. A lot of this is boots on the ground, shovels in hand, actually out there doing the work. And, you know, sometimes with the game departments and sometimes just alone because it's got to get done. Exactly. The, you know, the, the desert Southwest, if, you know, if you want wildlife, you got to have water. Right. Uh, you know, interesting enough, we've, you know, we built our homes and we built our communities where there were springs. Well, that, that displaced uh, wildlife. So, you know what what's been done. Uh, Fraternity of the Desert Bighorn, in particular, down in uh, in Las Vegas. Uh, certainly, Society for the Conservation of Bighorn Sheep down in Southern California. Nevada Bighorns and Limited, uh, Northern uh, Northern Nevada, uh, have have done numerous water projects that that benefit not only the desert bighorn sheep population, but mule deer, quail, chucker. Uh, pretty amazing, you know, Nevada. Nevada in the 1960s had a remnant population of wild sheep. They mm. got really, you know, less than a thousand. They got really, really aggressive. Right. Did a great number of translocations, put water for wildlife out in the desert. And as you pointed out, boots on the ground, hundreds of volunteers, thousands of man hours, hundreds of thousands of dollars in contributions to build. The guzzlers are about $25,000, $30,000 a piece. Wow. Um, and they've got now, Tom, uh, more than 12,000 bighorn sheep uh, in, in Nevada. So a, a huge wow. success story, just bringing water to wildlife. And as you say, you know, when you bring water in, when you build up habitat, you can't have habitat for just one species. You've got a lot of other species that benefit from that. But I, I got to tell you my, my bighorn sheep story, though, okay? Um I, I was fortunate enough. I, I did get a, a desert bighorn. I moved to Arizona and applied. First off, first thing you do, of course, when you become a resident, you apply. And typically it's 10, 15, 20 years before you get drawn for a bighorn tag. I ended up writing an article about it. I called it the Brotherhood of the Sheep because it kind of goes to what we're talking about here with the Wild Sheep Foundation. It's those who love sheep and sheep hunting – and those can be two different things. There are people who love sheep and what they're all about and who don't hunt sheep. So there, there's that. But they band together and they help each other and they do this work. And I applied for a tag. And unbelievably, I got drawn the first year. Oh. <laughs> and, for you. Yeah. And so, okay, you'll appreciate this. So it's like, I, I get this tag. This is unbelievable. I got a big horn tag. And so I would tell my friends... And the response was always the same. They started off with, well, you SOB. Yeah. And yeah. Then, and you, then you, it, your friends became haters. <laughs> except that it was, it was interesting. Right after that, immediately after that was, how can I help? Yeah. And it was like, yeah, oh, okay, sure. you know, I, I can cook. I can, I can spot. I can, I, you know, I can do these things. Because what it amounts to, and this is what I learned about the Brotherhood of the Sheep, is that you can hunt sheep without a tag. You just can't pull a trigger. So these people hunt sheep every year because they get together with somebody who has a tag and they become the, the support group. 
I wasn't finding one. I, I, I was out there hunting in the desert by myself in Arizona. And one evening, I come back to the travel trailer where I'm staying. And it's in the middle of nowhere. There's no one out there. And there's a note stuck in the door. And it's, hey, I'm Bill Tate. And the other fellow who was with him, he says, I don't know if you're having any luck. But if you haven't, give me a call. I think we can help. I'd never heard of these guys before. So I go into town. This is before cell phones. I call these guys. And they said, well, you know, we just finished helping somebody else. If you haven't found anything, we think we can help. I get together with them. They put me on a sheep. Yeah. Just just out of the yeah. – out, and that's the the ethos. That's the mindset we're talking about that really, when you get down to it, is the foundation and what makes the Wild Sheep Foundation itself work. You know, Tom, we, we call it our Wild Sheep family, and and you're, you're so right because – you know, because the, you know, a, a sheep tag and, and, you know, Montana, we have a, an over the counter, um, unlimited area opportunity, which mm-hmm. is the only one in the lower 48. But, you know, for the most part, you know, you either got to be lucky mm-hmm. or you got to have a big pocketbook, right. uh, and buy one of the, you know, the premier, um, you know, governors right. or, or limited tags. But, you, you know, you're so right. Yeah. Um, you, you know, everyone loves to participate. So mm-hmm. you can hunt sheep. You're doing the exact same thing as you and the others, but you're just not pulling the trigger. And, and that, that is something special about sheep. You know, I, one of our conservation directors had, had uh, you know, booked, booked a uh, desert bighorn sheep and mm-hmm. looked at me and he goes, I'm going to do this, but will you come around, you know, along? Well, heck yeah, I'm going to take holiday and come <laughs> along and help you out. Sure. Um, you know, I didn't have a desert sheep at the time. Right. So that's my opportunity to hunt sheep. And I, and, and you know, the, the, the fun thing is, and I found it sharing, you know, sharing our hunting heritage with others, you know, whether it's my wife, whether it's a nephew, whether it's a niece, right. I honestly find that I hunt harder when I'm hunting for somebody else. Uh, I don't know what it is about it, but there, you know, there's just something that, you know, I may not take that nap. I'm going to be more at the glass. You could, I don't know. You just, you, you're, you're just into it. So it is, it's something, something uh, very special about uh, wild sheep. And, and that is certainly, uh, you know, the ethos and the, the culture of the Wild Sheep Foundation. Well, and for those who don't know, in a lot of places like Arizona where I got mine, it's a once-in-a-lifetime tag. So I have taken my sheep in Arizona unless I were to somehow draw like a, a governor's tag. In a case you can do it, they have the raffles in a few places, and you can try that. I'll never, you know, be able to pay the two or $300,000 that some folks do pay for that. And I should mention that, and sometimes people will get upset about that. They go, well, yeah, these big dollar guys are pouring all this money into it. I say, well, wait, stop. Do you know where the money goes? So if you would explain to them where a lot of this big money for sheep tags, like special tags like that, where does this go? Tom, we did a, a study, and this was a Western Association of Fish and Wildlife Agency data mm-hmm. in 2014. And because, you know, there's controversy over those special tags, you know, this is a bastardization of the North American model, you know, blah, 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 blah. And, you know, look, I'm not going to be able to afford one of those things either. However, we we demonstrated that 74 percent of all state, provincial, tribal wild sheep restoration dollars come from either a auction tag or a raffle tag. And the majority wow. of it come from the auction tax, 74%. Uh, amazingly enough, because we are the marquee seller of those special permits and tags, right. 40% of all wild sheep restoration dollars come from one organization, Wild Sheep Foundation. And so, you know, to, to, to tag on to yours, I, I got a quick story, which, okay. which you know, really demonstrates. I, I was living in the Wyoming at the time out of our Cody headquarters. I wanted to hunt bighorn sheep. I'd, I'd hunted uh, the unlimited area in Montana, and it's an over-the-counter deal. Now, right. success is 3 to 5%, so there you go. But <laughs> yeah. you've got a sheep tag in your pocket, and you're hunting sheep. Right. I hunted in 2012 uh, for about 16 days, saw some some un, you know non-legal rams, saw some use. That was it. I had a fabulous time. I was hunting sheep. I came back in 2014, and I hunted a different unit. And there's a whole long story to the whole process, but interesting enough, the tag buyer for Montana bought that tag in 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 uh, 2013, and then or uh, yeah, so it was no, it was 2014. So he hunted, you know, he bought it for tw- in 2014 for ah, 300, 305, 310 thousand dollars. Okay. Um, 
I got to hunt and I took a ram, you know, better to be lucky than good. Mm-hmm. But I took a ram, a 13 and a half year old ram, about 15, 16, 17 miles in um, on a on an over the counter, you know, non resident. It was 750 bucks of at the time, right. I was able to take a bighorn sheep for that amount of money as a Wyoming resident in Montana because some crazy son of a gun wanted to spend $310,000. 90% of that goes right back to Fish, Wildlife, and Parks to fund their bighorn sheep restoration mm-hmm. programs. And the other 10 goes to Wild Sheep Foundation for us to fund in Montana. So I was able to hunt a bighorn at a very reasonable price because there was a gentleman that wanted to pay, you know, the big bucks right. and get his tag. So God bless him. I don't, I'm not jealous. I'm not envious. I am grateful that there are people that, you know, they'll give to their church. They'll give to, uh, you know, mm-hmm. for humanitarian services or some of these guys and gals give to wildlife restoration, whether it's a mule deer, whether it's a sheep, whether it's an elk and, and we, you know, Let's not let's not have class envy or you know or right. any other envy. Let's just call it grateful that there are men and women out there yes. that are willing, have the wherewithal, and willing to do it. No kidding, and it is certainly a form of philanthropy. They're actually helping out uh, with the restoration and bringing back wild sheep. Let me ask you a question here. Yes, sir. Wild Sheep Foundation. Now, originally we're thinking North America. Does it broader than that now? It is. You know, we're still from oh about ninety percent of our our efforts are in North America. Uh, you know, great efforts in Canada, great efforts in Mexico, and certainly, you know, efforts in the lower 48 and, you know, in Alaska. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we have branched out, and, and, and a lot of it, Tom, is the that conservation tag program. The Wall Street Foundation is a member of the IUCN, the International Union of Conservation of Nature. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got involved in IUCN and then were tasked to support and uh, help launch a Central Asian initiative of IUCN mm-hmm. uh, to conserve the Argali and other wild ungulate, mountain ungulate, uh, ibex in, in Central Asia. Right. Uh, we came and gave a presentation on the model that you and I just talked about, that special t- permit and tag scenario. And we gave a presentation uh, just out, out uh, outside of Bishkek, uh, Kyrgyzstan, and um, we, we had representatives from uh, Iran to Pakistan to Kazakhstan to Kyrgyzstan to Tajikistan, uh, Turkey, all there uh, learning how we fund wild sheep conservation. Huh. Uh, wild Sheep Foundation is now working our Central Asian Conservation Initiative in Kazakhstan, uh, Kyrgyzstan, and Tajikistan using the the special permit as the model. Interesting enough, Kazakhstan is open for hunting for roe deer and maral stag, you know, kind of like our, our, our elk or, right. you know, or red stag, um, but not yet for our golly. But through this program, we are confident that they now see a way to fund our golly conservation in their country through a, you know, a special limited tag that, uh, that, that, you know, wow. uh, foreigners and and local and by. So, okay. um, again, we do most of our work in North America, but we're certainly very, very engaged in uh, in, in Central Asia. Now we're talking with Gray Thornton. He's the president and CEO of the Wild Sheep Foundation. Hey, Gray, tell me about Sheep Week. Well, you know, one uh, one hell of a year we've all had, and it's not just uh, it's not just in America; it's around the world. Right? You know, our uh, our annual bake sale. You know, we've been talking, Tom, about how we we raise money for right. uh, for wild re- wild sheep restoration. Yes, a great deal of it comes from those uh, those tags. Uh, also, a big deal comes from you know our annual event, like uh, you know, like Mule Deer Foundation, like Safari Club International, mm-hmm. our friends at Dallas Safari Club, Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation, Wild Sheep Foundation hosts an annual convention. Okay. Well, uh, this year that's not going to happen in an in-person format. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're limited. Our show is in Reno, Nevada. We're limited by assembly rules. Uh, no more than fifty. Uh, I think it dropped down to twenty-five. Obviously, we can't have a, a show that puts 2,000 people in a banquet hall and 10,000 people in an exhibit hall uh, with a restriction such as that. So early on, uh, even back in the spring, we were looking at what was transpiring, the shutdowns, and we thought, we better have a plan. Mm-hmm. 
Um, so uh, we we did, and over the summer we started to pivot on kind of a dual path. Hey, if we can have an in person show, we will. If we can't, we're going to have a plan. We built a plan, and uh, we we're we're looking forward to people coming. We have created a hybrid event. Okay, we searched uh, the world for expo platforms. Uh, we've got a tried and true expo platform that is a, a virtual convention. Uh, what does that mean? Well, as an exhibitor, uh, you build your booth in an online uh, place. Uh, it, it can, it's a basically a microsite for you, uh, mm. but very targeted to a, a dedicated mountain hunting audience. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if you're an outfitter or, or a guide, uh, that certainly works. It, you, you, know, you can upload photos, videos, price lists. There's live chat. There's live Zoom. Uh, we gamify it to incentivize uh, attendees to go to your booth and then gain points every okay. booth that they visit. Okay, but let me ask you, so, points. but if you're a hunter and you're thinking, I want to know more about sheep hunting, you can also participate in this and basically do it online. You don't even have to go to Reno this year. No, you join, uh, you go to sheepweek.org mm-hmm. and register for 50 bucks. So you can participate in the expo, the auctions, the seminars, educational seminars, cool. Um, real cool videos. And, and to spiff it up a little bit, and this is now a sheep week, not the sheep show. Right. It's a one week celebration, January 11th through 16th, 2021. Uh, you can, you know, you can chat live with people. We've got some great celebrities that are going to join us, but for everyone that registers, and again, it's only 50 bucks for right. the entire week. You're entered into a drawing to win a desert bighorn sheep hunt, free range Sonora, Mexico, a Sierra El Alamo. Oh, that, that sheep days. hunt sells, uh, sells for about 65,000 bucks. <laughs> Some registrant is going to go home with that sheep. So Wait, fifty bucks, uh, really fifty bucks. That's it for a chance to get Sheep a sixty-five Week. thousand dollar hunt. Holy cow! Yeah. All right, sheepweek.org. Not a bad and, deal. and if people want to know more about uh, the Wild Sheep Foundation, it's really easy. It's wildsheepfoundation.org. You got it. That is terrific. Well, congratulations on the success with the organization, and even more so with the success on bringing back our wild sheep and what you guys are doing. It is a, it's a terrific effort. As you say, it's a singular effort because you don't have the millions of people doing it like you would for turkey or something else. So you got to do it with fewer people, so you got to work harder. Fewer people, but passionate, passionate agencies, passionate tribal partners, passionate territorial and provincial partners. So we, we do it as a team. Our chapters and affiliates are in in states and provinces and territories and and, and some tribal entities, all working for that resource to put and keep wild sheep on the mountain. Terrific. Great. Thank you so much for spending some time with us. Tom, really appreciate it. All right. Take care.